So welcome to day one at BET. Really pleased to be here today and to have some honoured guests with me. And we're going to really look at the future and talk a little bit about the future of higher education. What does a classroom look like? I'm Peter Claxton. I'm going to act as the chair today and I'm just going to introduce our panel and I'm going to start with Brian, do you want to just say a few words? Um, hello everyone, welcome to BED. I'm Brian, I'm the Director of Commercial Display and Solution for Views on the Europe. Thank you, Thank you, Brian. And then Mark. Hello, I'm Mark from Intel and I'm looking after our education portfolio in Europe. Hi, I'm Tom Duff, uh, welcome to BET and I'm the Director of Learning and Teaching at City of Glasgow College. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. And, and let's start by, we're, we're obviously talking about Glasgow College and the virtual learning lab that we've um, worked on there and is actually uh, one of the finalists in the BET Awards. So congratulations, everybody. But maybe if we just start with you, Tom, what's the one major learning that you've had so far in this project which i know has been going on for a year and a half a year and a half yeah i think um i think with all these projects it's a it's a leap of faith in terms of trying to change and use the technology differently but more importantly i think it's about getting people to use their teaching and learning platform differently so the biggest thing for me is cultural change and winning hearts and minds of staff. And in order to do that, it has to be simple, it has to be easy to use, and not overly difficult. Unless, if it's overly difficult, staff just switch off. So that's where the secret of this project started. It's had a few bumps, which is natural in this sort of environment. But just this week, we've got it to a point where we think we can scale it up. Okay. So, w so would you say quite a bit of it has been about change management? Without a doubt, when I started my job, in fact, when I started my last five jobs, it was always about cultural change, about creating space for staff to, to teach differently. And COVID, one of the COVID bounces has been that staff have been allowed to change how they teach. So we had 10% engaged in technology before COVID. We've now got 90% engaged in technology and they're not scared of it now. They can see the potential, they can see the innovation, and they're desperate for us to help them. So something like the Bits of Learning Lab allows them to do collaborative learning, it allows it to do off-campus, on-campus. It just allows a different approach. I call it changing the teaching hour from lecture slides and PowerPoint to 20 minutes activity, lots of activity in the room, lots of activity online, and bringing the class together at the end. Brilliant. And may, maybe the same question to Mark from Intel and from Intel's perspective. What, what's a major takeaway thought on the virtual learning lab? I think, as Tom says, it's been 18 months, but it's been like a journey. So we had an idea at the start of what it would look like. And I think 18 months later, it looks a little different. So we didn't want to go in and say, hey, this is a solution. Take it, Glasgow, and away you go. It was actually like a collaborative partnership with everyone. And I think... That's been a super valuable learning. You know, we've kind of refined it down to a really neat core set of technology which people are now using. So that's one. And the second one is to trial some new technology. We're looking to, you know, look at some of this computer vision technology. What value does it bring to education, to the staff and to the students? And you know, how do we go forward with it by analysing the data? Yeah, exactly. Do you, do you see um, and does Intel see data as a key? area moving forward yeah 100 percent. if you look at across all industries now like industrial automotive healthcare you know everything is about the data now and you get so much insight the more data you can collect the more insights you can you can um analyze and there's there's going to be some interesting marginal gains i think that happen from all the sensors in the visual learning lab when we start picking through that data there's going to be some really interesting learnings that we can find from that yeah, and and Brian, from ViewSonic's point of view, and, and what what do we think ViewSonic has learned from the project so far? Yeah, I think uh, ViewSonic, as a display specialized company, we always um, 
very enthusiastic to know what our solution and application can bring more uh, to the education environment. And when it comes to the higher education, we're really happy to work with the uh, City College of Glasgow because this COVID situation always actually bring us, a, a, actually bring all of us a, a new challenge. Yeah. And that um, the virtual learning lab that we have been setting up is one of the first, uh, the concept proof, um, uh, hybrid uh, classroom setting that we have because as uh, Tommy just rightly uh, pointed out like during the COVID there was a, a, a new a surge demand on how to uh, facilitate it uh, this a uh, different um, uh, learning behavior or also the teaching behavior exactly. because you you yeah. do need to uh, facilitate with the uh, with the people who are, who won't be able to attend uh, to the campus yeah. and then how to that make it easier for the lecturer and also for the participant they can be seamlessly without any difficulties and I think that's what we are uh, what we really learn uh, from the setting we have in the city uh, college of the Glasgow and yeah. we're really happy that we we, we met a little bit of the, the, um, the, the support here yeah. and actually that's to Brian's point again as well is trying to move it from that kind of AV space where it is lots of different boxes loads of wires no one's got a clue what does what how do we get rid of all that and make it simple to install simple to use plug and play so that the staff and not thinking, oh my goodness, what does this box do? I have no idea. It's different from the boxes over there. They just want like a PC. I'm going to switch it on and it works. Yeah. I think um, I, I did a training session recently on the, in the lab. And one of our deans came along and he immediately said, I'm a technophobe, Tom. I'll break everything I touch. And in three steps, he said, you turn the PC on, you move the mouse, you log in, and you're away. Oh, it's just like my desktop, yeah. And, and immediately he just relaxed and he never broke anything, so. And, and if you, you were talking to colleagues in colleges around the United Kingdom, Scotland, yeah. uh, what, what advice would you give them if they're thinking about how, how do I build on the gains that hybrid learning has bought? Well, first of all, we've got to commit. We can't go back to where we've been. It's not me doing mend. We're not going back to face-to-face. I think we're in a hybrid learning environment. Students need to come to college because construction, beauty, hospitality, certain subjects need some aspect of face-to-face. -face. There's also the social aspect where students need to be in college to see their friends. So instead of having a five-day week, we've moved to a hybrid environment where it's a two-day week on college and it's a three-day week online. And some courses have to be five days because of the nature of them but they can still be supported. When we bring the students of whatever subject area into the, the, le the learning lab, they just love it because they don't see it as a stressful thing. They've got big monitors. They've got this nice camera following the, the, the advisor. They love the sense thing, the my, my view board sense at the end. We showed that to a group of students and they immediately became competitive and said, how do we improve in that? So it's a bit of fun, which is more important. All too often, and we've still got lecturers who do seven hours of PowerPoint learning. And it just kills the student and it kills the staff. And it's a fear in the staff. And that's what I'm saying. It's got to be simple. It's got to work first time. And they've got to be comfortable and supported by my team. And I think that's an important word you mentioned there, which is fun. It's fun, And yeah. I think you're right. We sometimes do death by... Yeah. slides and what have you Indeed. Um, from from Intel's point of view what would you be saying to people thinking about working with ViewSonic or Intel or other organizations first of all look at some of the cool stuff that we've done at Glasgow you know we've there's some stuff out there published now you can you can really understand what we've done uh, secondly just reach out and have a conversation yeah. it's not prescriptive we're not saying this is what it is it's about a journey for all of us and which have a conversation. Indeed, indeed. And Brian, from ViewSonic's point of view, what would you say to people thinking about, you know, wanting to work with a company, with a commercial company? Yeah, I think it's the same, like what um, um, uh, Mark just said. Uh, come to talk us, because I think every uh, school, every department, every subject, this requires a slightly different setting. And then we have to make it very flexible and also scalable. And then this is always w where we are coming from, because um, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to um, promote it, a very complicated solution where nobody knows how to use it, because the technology has to be used and to deliver the real benefits.
Yeah, so that sort of democratising education is a, a phrase we've heard a lot. And I know yeah. there's been a lot of interest in the Glasgow project. It's shortlisted for the BET Award. So we're looking forward to see if we uh, where we come in that. But I think that still is a great recognition of the collaboration that has happened between companies and the world of academia. So maybe just to wrap up, a thought from each of you, maybe Brian, one one general thought moving forward? Uh, I think moving forward, uh, we, we're looking into how to get this virtual learning uh, set up in a more um, productive way. Um, we were probably looking into uh, to scale it up a bit with the multiple uh, uh, multiple screens in the classroom. Um, that sort of the created uh, even more uh, collaboration and engagement to the um, to the classroom itself. Yeah. Okay. And Mark, from Intel's perspective, um, for me, it's all about the new technology, like the stuff going on in the sense and the data that it generates. You know, analyzing the data, marginal gains. And I think for me. It's very much about how do we take, we're using the virtual learning lab as a training environment for staff and for conferences and for students to use it and staff to use it. But we've now got four rooms identified in this beautiful building and we have to kind of scale it up, but scale it down. We can't have another visual learning lab in that space. So we have to have some sort of touchscreen technology with cameras that allows us to say, well, you, we taught you in this lab, but you're going to use it in all your classrooms. And the big important thing for us is the college, it's a £250 million building. They now realise they have to invest in this technology in order for students to come. Because if they don't, it's no longer fit for purpose. They will not come five days. They will not tolerate PowerPoint slides. They want interactive, live data and collaborative learning, 20-minute chunks, 10-minute chunks, assessment on the hoof. All these things are how we learn in life, and that's how we need to teach our students in the future. And I think that's a great place to finish, because I think it is about the students, it's about the children, it's about what we can bring to really drive educational attainment and outcomes. I thank you very much for your thoughts, gentlemen. Been a great conversation, and anybody who's thinking of you know, wanting to work with a company, come and talk to us. We're, we're here, we're open, we want to collaborate, and it really is about a long-term relationship. So thank you all, have a great bet, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.